Hey guys, welcome back to Oliver's One Take. Uh, this weekend was actually pretty crazy for the association. Um, the Pistons snapped their losing streak. It was really big for the Raptors because the Pistons snapped their losing streak on the Raptors and a crowd favorite, OG Ananobi, was traded to the Knicks. So it's... I could see how Raptors fans are both excited and disgusted with the organization right at this point. I know I am. Uh, you know, I live in Canada, so I watch the Raptors um, I'm, among many other teams. But I definitely pay attention to the Raptors and I don't even want to get into it. I don't even want to get into it. Anyway, let's talk about this trade for... for um, the Knicks perspective and then the Raptors perspective. So for the Knicks, um, trading for OG Ananobi has a lot of upside. He's a top three perimeter defender in the league. I believe that like last year in the 2022-2023 season, um, when defending all-stars, he's the second in his defensive capability. And... So not many, not many people know about OG's potential if you don't really watch the Raptors. You know, the Raptors are, they're not a small market team, but they're kind of, they're not, they're not really that known. So people don't really know about OG's potential, but he has been one of the most coveted mid-level players to trade for in basically the past two years. So the fact that the Knicks got OG um, in a deal that they didn't, I wouldn't say that they had to give up too much. Um, they gave up RJ Barrett. They gave up Emmanuel quickly. They gave up a second round pick. Um, it seems like they gave up some with the potential of gaining more. And so that's very important for the direction that the Knicks seem to want to go in it seems like they they're trying to contend um right now before the trade i would have said that the knicks are probably the fifth best team in the east and but being the fifth best it really won't get you anywhere especially when you have the boston celtics ahead of you you have the bucks you have philly all teams who they're basically the juggernauts in the East, and they seem, I wouldn't say head and shoulders, but definitely a head above where the Knicks are. So training for OG, a defensive specialist, um, really helps out the complexion of the Knicks organization. And talking about OG's potential, um, Leon Rose, the president of the Knicks, talked about how um, OG's really potent on the defensive end, but he also has a lot of offensive capabilities. And I agree with that. I agree with that premise. I think in terms of OG, he doesn't really have an ability to self-create shots right now. Um, he's not too efficient in scoring in isolation, but he does have a great three-point shot. Um, his corner threes, his wing threes, um, threes straight down the middle. He's av he's averaging a, a competitive percentage. And then he's also a great slasher to the hoop. He's a great slasher. He spaces the floor really nicely. And he's he's sneaky on those baseline drives for easy, easy layups, easy dunks. So OG has a lot of upside, especially... Because the Knicks actually have one of the worst spacing um, percentages in the league. So OG actually helps them on their overall offensive, cohesive game. And then on the defensive end, he's a beast. Um, I think a sneaky pickup for the Knicks was also Precious Achua. He's... When, when he comes off the bench, um, he comes in as either a power forward or a short center, um, an undersized center, rather. 
and he brings a lot of energy. I think the Knicks can use that, especially when, you know, like Isaiah Hartenstein um, goes to the bench. Um, and that kind of replaces like Taj Gibson. I know uh, Thibodeau loves Taj Gibson, but Taj, Taj isn't really producing at a level that we we like, especially in his old age. I don't want to call a player old or anything, but, you know, he's old in professional sports years. Um, Precious Achua can give them a little bit of a pep or a little bit of a spring in their step off the bench, um, running the floor and just being, a, I wouldn't say, a I was going to say a menace on the defensive end. He's not quite that, but a key piece in that second unit. Now, um, let's talk about the Raptors' perspective. I think, actually, I'll grade it first. For the Knicks, I think this trade is a B. I think it's a B. I think losing Emmanuel quickly was... Um, it wasn't like drastic or anything, but Emmanuel quickly was the second um was second place in voting for six men of the year last year. So he was a key piece of the Knicks. But it is true that that Emmanuel didn't have a great playoffs. So trading that for like the upside of OG um was good. But they lose a little bit of scoring from R from RJ Barrett and um, Emmanuel quickly leaving the team. Now let's look at the Raptors' perspective. For the Raptors, this trade has the potential to be an A minus. We have to understand that OG was on an expiring contract, so he had to be traded because the Raptors, the Raptors aren't really a tanking team. They don't like to tank, so. So they always want to be in contention. They had to trade OG. And this trade provides, um, gets you back RJ Barrett, who averages more points than OG. Uh, RJ averages about 18.1, I think. And OG, or 18.3, something like that. And OG averages 15.1. So we're getting a bit more scoring at the forward position. RJ can also defend well. Um, so it's not like we're losing out on completely defensively, uh, but we are gaining more scoring in that aspect. RJ, I think, has some more room to grow, where, whereas OG, the level that he's at right now, I don't really see him taking a huge step forward. I think RJ has the potential to to score 21 points per night um, with maybe like three more rebounds and four more assists. I think, I think on the Knicks, RJ Barrett was underutilized, whereas now he has a perfect opportunity to blossom into a slightly bigger role. Do I think he's a second option to Scotty Barnes? No, I don't. I think... I think RJ has the potential to be that perfect third option, which would make way for the, a Pascal Siakam trade for a second option and maybe some picks to help build, uh, point the franchise in the right direction as Scotty takes the helm and is the de facto leader of the Raptors. Now... I think the most the most underrated, maybe not underrated, but the best like add-on or pickup um to the whole trade was Emmanuel Quickly, who's now gonna be part of the Toronto Raptors. As I said before, he was uh second in voting for six men of the year. He's a spark plug off the bench. Um he shoots the three better than Dennis Schroeder, who's currently the starting point guard on the Raptors, and I 
think eventually Emmanuel quickly can take Dennis Schroeder's spot. This is a perfect opportunity for Emmanuel quickly to step into a starting role, provided that he can do that. Um, I think that's what Masai Ujiri is expecting from Emmanuel, um, to be able to step into that, um, be the floor general for the Raptors organization for this year and may, and, or maybe they'll probably share responsibilities with Dennis, but as, as the years progress, Emmanuel has the ability to step into a starting role, uh, position, um, a dynamic point guard able to run the floor with pace and hopefully with poise as well. Um, so I give this trade for the Raptors an A minus because of the additional second round pick. Now I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but that second round pick is probably going to be the 31st pick in the draft. And the Raptors aren't really known for finding gems in the second round, but we have found players like, you know, Boucher or um, that's all. That's the only second round pick I really know. Um, Christian Coloco hasn't been too good, but Chris Boucher. Um, hopefully with the Raptors and that second round pick, we can either use that um Use that to draft a player like, you know, the the Heat drafted uh, that Jamie Hawkes, Jamie Hawkes Jr. Um, in the second round. So it's not like it's not like you can't get good players in the second round. You can. You can get good players. Um, Fred Van Fleet was undrafted. Um, plenty of good players that you can get outside of the first round. So getting that second round pick just gives them a little bit of leeway, a little bit of an advantage in the whole trade situation. And then also you can use that. It's an asset that you can use in the future to either trade away or to build upon. So that is beneficial to the Raptors. And then, but I don't think either teams are done. I don't think the Knicks are done trading trading to become better this season. And the Raptors definitely aren't done because Pascal Siakam is on an expiring contract. So, so unless the Raptors want to let him leave for nothing, he will soon be traded as well. Um, so I don't, I don't know who they're going to get back, but that's definitely an interesting speculation. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Just like, comment, share, and subscribe. Uh, let me know who you get, who you guys think won the trade and the potential next moves for these organizations. All right. See you guys on the next one.